This section is section 5C in the Math 111 course, Statistical Tables and Graphs. And in this section, we will be looking at different ways to display your data that you collected in your statistical study using tables and graphs. We will look at how to construct some of the tables and graphs manually and by using technology. Of course, if you are performing a statistical study for say a college class or a place of employment, you would most likely use technology. The book uses Excel, but other computer packages can be utilized as well. The first thing we want to look at is two types of data. Your data can either be qualitative data or it can be quantitative data. Data is considered to be qualitative data if it describes qualities or categories. For example, if we're looking at colors, say of M&Ms, or gender, those would be examples of qualitative data. To be considered quantitative data, quantitative data represents counts or measures. And examples of quantitative data would be temperatures, or ages. Okay, the first way to display your data that we're going to talk about is called a frequency table. And we're going to do an example of qualitative data of a qualitative data set. The following grades represent math test grades. So you can see them all listed there. And I chose to only include 10 because of just the logistics of doing the frequency table. This is qualitative data because the test grades are represented by a letter as opposed to a actual value. So in a frequency table, we have four possible columns. The first column is your categories. Your second column is your frequency within each category. The third one is the relative frequency, which is just the frequency divided by the total number of data points, and it's usually converted to a percent. And the fourth column is your cumulative frequency. To calculate your cumulative frequency, it's the frequency of your current category plus the frequency of all preceding categories. So we're going to get, use this qualitative data in order to construct a frequency table. Okay, so we're going to use the data in the previous slide to construct a frequency table. So here's our data. And the first thing you want to have in your frequency table is a title. So the title here is grades on a math test. The second thing you want to do is your first column, which is your grades. Underneath there, I listed A, B, C, and D. And then I also have a total column, which we're going to use to total up each of the other columns that it makes sense to, just to make sure that we included all the data. Next, we're going to fill in our frequency column. So we're going to count up the number of A's that occurred. So we have one, two, three A's. So we're going to put a three there. We have one, two B's, so we're going to put a two there. We have one, two, three C's, so we're going to put a three there. We have one, two D's, so we're going to put a two there. And then in our total column, we're going to add up three plus two plus three plus two, and we get 10. So 10 verifies that we included every single data point. Next, I filled in the relative frequency column. So we want relative to the total number, which is 10. So it's 3 divided by 10, which is 30. For, the, for A, 30%, 20% for B, 30% for C, 20% for D. So our total should add up to 100%, which it does. Lastly, I filled in the cumulative frequency column. So your cumulative frequency is that frequency plus all preceding. So the first one's going to be 3, 
The next one's going to be 3 plus 2, which is 5. The next is 3 plus 2 plus 3, which is 8. And the last is 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2, which is 10. This 10 should be equal to your total, which it is. So we did that correctly. If you want to make a frequency table using technology, I will point you to a um, place in your textbook, which is page 311. And as I said before, they use Excel. Next, we're gonna use the first two columns, which are the grade and frequency column, to construct what we call a bar graph. So we're gonna use the example that we already used, and the data is listed here, and I will point you to the frequency table that we just constructed um, to make this bar graph. Okay, so for our bar graph, for this particular data, we need a title, which is grades on a math test. We also need a scale on the vertical side, which is from zero up to three, and we need to label that as well, and we labeled that frequency. We need to do the same thing on the horizontal scale. List out all the grades, A, B, C, D, and then also have a title or a label for that horizontal axis. To complete the bar graph, we just fill in bars representing the height of the frequency of each of the grades, A, B, C, and D. In order to use technology for a bar graph, I will point you to the textbook, page 316. And of course, using technology, it will look much more crisp and nice than the previous slide. The next thing we're gonna talk about is making a pie chart using the frequency table. The pie chart uses the first column, which is grades, and the third column, which is the relative frequency column. Okay, so for our pie chart, we definitely need a title, which again is math test grades. And then each one of these is a piece of pie. So our A was 30%, B was 20%, C was 30%, and D was 20%. And again, it must add up to 100%, and each one is a piece of pie. And again, to make this pie chart look a lot neater, you're going to use technology. And I'm going to direct you to the textbook, page 316, which again uses Excel. Okay, so we just completed doing a frequency table, a bar graph, and a pie chart using quantita qualitative data. Now we're going to look at quantitative data and charts that we would use for that. The two charts that we're primarily going to talk about in this section is a histogram, and a line graph. And all I did down here at the bottom with the example is I converted the um, letters now to actual values. So a 93 was an A, 75 a C, 82 a B, 64 a D, etc. So again, we have 10 math test scores, but now they're as quantitative data as opposed to the qualitative data that we looked at previously. Okay, so the first um, graph that we want to look at to display your quantitative data is called a histogram. So with a histogram, we're going to do something called binning the data. So say that we have the math test scores that are on the previous page, but now they're listed as quantitative data. Our frequency table is just going to change a little bit from the qualitative data. And our bins are listed in this first column here. And for the sake of argument, in this particular case, it makes sense to bin the data such as is listed below. 60 to 69 is a D in reality. 70 to 79 um, is a C. 80 to 89 is a B. And 90 to 99 is an A. So your frequency column is going to be the same values that we had before, they're sort of in reverse order though because we started with the 60 to 69 as opposed to the A, but everything else is pretty much the same. Okay, and now on the lower right is a, is a histogram. It's not very pretty, but I just made it here. And um, we have a title here, which of course should go down below here. 
Um, we also would um, list out our frequencies here. And then down below is our bin data. And then the height, again, it's like a bar graph, except now it's a histogram. So normally with a histogram, the difference is that it's quantitative data and the bars actually do touch each other because it is a continuous type of a um, system there or chart. The other type of graph for quantitative data is your line graph. And a line graph, the only difference between a line graph and a histogram is that a histogram has the bars to represent the height of each category where a line graph just has a dot and then a line to connect all these dots. Okay, um, again, the importance of labeling both your title and each one of your axes. Okay, and one thing I didn't talk about is starting your axes at zero, your vertical axes, which we talked about previously in the other section, but note that I did that in, this, in all the graphs that we did today. Of course, you will probably be using technology um, in order to make your line graph or line chart, and it explains how to do that in your textbook on page 318. And they, again, use Excel. The last graph that we're going to talk about in this section is called a time series graph. And a time series graph is just a special type of a line graph. So the only difference there is that in this particular type of a line graph, your horizontal axis represents some unit of time. And your frequency of some variable that you're looking at is still represented on this vertical axis. Okay, so just a quick example of a time series graph, and this data is kind of made up. Um, say we're looking at death rates in a specific city, and so this is the year along the horizontal axis, and then this, the height of each one of these um, dots represents the death rate. Okay, so what we can do with a time series is look at what happens with trends. For example, what happened in this particular year that it went down so low? What happened between this year and this year that it decreased so much? What happened here when it increased so much? And then again, down here where we had a, a huge decrease down here. Um, so we can use this particular line chart to look at trends and somebody would actually dig into this and try to figure out exactly what happened at that time. This concludes section 5C, which is statistical tables and graphs. Of course, there are other graphs and tables that exist to display your data. The key to finding the specific graphs that you should use in your statistical study is to find the graphs that fit your statistical studies goal and what you want to accomplish.